Now, to this point, we've just been doing examples, and I've sort of told you what the punchline is, but I haven't really explained to you how you get there, and we're, we're going to do that. But I, I want you to see that you've actually seen this mathematics twice before. Certainly, all of you have seen it once. I'm not so sure about all of you have seen the other one. If you remember back to first semester calculus, if you took it, increasingly a large fraction of our entering class skips first semester calculus. But if you did first semester calculus, you studied partial fractions. So the, the technique of integrating a rational function. A rational function is one polynomial divided by another one. But when you do the long division, you get a quotient plus a remainder over a denominator. And the remainder over the denominator has the form p of x over q of x, where the degree of p of x is less than the degree of q of x. And then you learn that you can write that as a part, and it's called the partial fraction decomposition. Don't ask me why. It has nothing to do with partial. It has nothing to do with, well, it does have to do with fractions. Where the phrase partial fraction came from, I have not a clue. All right, so independent of what the numerator is, p of x, the form of the decomposition depends entirely on the factors of the denominator. So in the real number system, it's c1 over x minus 3 plus c2 over x minus 3 squared plus c3 over x minus 3 cubed plus c4 over x plus c5 over x squared. And then you see when you're integrating, I mean, that's, that's the whole reason for doing this, uh, you get two terms of, in, in those first five that become natural logs, and the others are just integrating x to the minus n. Okay, now, the, the last one I threw in a, uh, I threw a quadratic in that has complex roots. And, in the real analysis of this, you write that as c6 over the 1 quadratic and c7, and it should be a c7x, or one of those two terms should have an x in it. Otherwise, they're, they're the same term. And uh, look at the first one, c6 over x squared plus 2x plus 9. Now I'm going to really quiz you what you remember from calculus. What's the antiderivative of that? What, what does it involve? You forgot it all, huh? Anybody know? What basic function? I'll give you a hint. It's, it could be e to the x, could be log x, could be sine, could be a cosine, could be inverse sine, inverse tangent. Uh, anybody? Inverse tangent. The inverse tangent of 1 over 1 plus x squared is tan inverse x. The, in the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is inverse tangent. And so after a substitution, the first term becomes that. Now the second term should be c7 times x over x squared plus 2x. And then that splits into two terms. One is a log and the other one is an inverse tangent. Okay, so partial fraction decompositions have this same flavor. The partial, the, the, the set of all rational functions is a dimensional vector space, finite dimensional vector space whose dimension is the degree of the denominator polynomial. And by the way, this is even cleaner if you state it in a complex number system. It's true, it, you know, your, your algebra and your, your fundamental theorem of algebra is, is really over the complex number field anyway. So if you take a rational function in the complex number system, where the degree of the denominator polynomial is, is degree d, then all the terms look like the first two lines. They're just roots, x minus a root to a power, x minus a root to a power, x minus root to a power. There are none of these quadratic nonsense, because you factor the, the quadratics in complex numbers. Okay. 
the complex number system has has a lot of advantages over the real number system. That's that's for sure. <laughs>